Biggest names around, now at great low prices. Only at Sears. Hurry in. Texas A&M trails by three. They need a yard and a half for a first down. It is fourth down Aggies, and they're going for it. You've got to. It'll be a 57-yard field goal attempt. Here's Toombs. He'll be close. He's it got looks it, like He's got it. But not by much. Blocked by McKinney and Valletta and Mayhem. And it's a great job up front because Texas attacking defense is coming down hard and Seth McKinney and Valletta get a good job, do a good job of getting their men and creating enough of a seam where he can get through and get the yardage. That was a strict power play and also our man Haimuli who has had a fabulous. They pulled, started, pulled Haimuli and got him in front of the big guys. Yeah. There's a look at Toons. First down, Aggies. There he is again. Picks up a yard. That's it. Isn't it only fitting that after this tumultuous week that this game is a three-point game. The home team has the foot driving in with six minutes to go and a chance to win it. It doesn't get any better. It's a dream setup for the Aggies. Keep in mind, Texas A&M's place kicker, Terrence Kitchens, has already hit a 62-yarder this year. And he's trailed by three. Second down and nine. Oh, oh, to the corner. It's complete to Cole. Chris Cole with the catch. They'll mark it at the 13. It's a gain of 24 yards. A lot of people say, well, why do you always throw that fade route? You don't ever complete it. Well, they've completed it twice today. The first time it led to a touchdown. And this time, Cole grabs it in one more time. Formerly the go-to guy, and he was the go-to guy on this play. Well, another reason is Cole is almost 6'1". Brooks is 5'8", and Hill is 5'9", the two cover corners. But Tim, that's a great point. The Texas coaches were very concerned about the size mismatch. They felt their corners were going to be in a jam playing against the, the size of receivers, the 6-2, 6-1, receivers of Texas A&M. Certainly well within the range of Kitchens, and Texas knows it. Yeah, they, they don't also, want three. Yeah. But they also know that A&M has been down here several times and turned it over. They don't want three. They don't want Major Applewhite to have a chance to come back and win this one. They want him to have to work for it. Second down and 11. Oh, and oh. to the corner. Touchdown, Texas a &M. Matt Bumgarner. So McCown throws a strike to Bumgardner, and it's a touchdown, Aggies. One, two, three, throw. Throws it on time. Perfectly thrown ball. Almost a little push off there, but you can't call that. Good no call, and Bump Bumgardner is in perfect position, and his height helped back. him once again as we just talked about the height advantage. Shane Leckler splits the sticks. And the Aggies have taken the lead with 5.02 left in the ball game. Well, you had a 5'8 cornerback hooked up with a 6'1 wide receiver. And the 6'1 wide receiver wins the battle. Bumgardner had that separated shoulder earlier in the year. He's been hurt his whole career, and it's only appropriate that this is the guy that makes the big play. He has sparked this team all year, showing gutty determination and coming back, and McCown who has struggled throughout, takes the lead and rejoices. Bob Gardner's first catch, and it was a big one. You know, McCallum doesn't have time to celebrate. He has to assume, along with the rest of the offensive staff and players, that they're going to fall behind, and they have to take it down to win the football game. 
guarantee you that's what Texas has been doing on its side. Well, Texas has come from behind in three of the last five games. The Horns trailed Oklahoma 17-0, trailed Nebraska 13-3, and Iowa 20-10. I just mentioned we'll bring it out. Look out. And he's out to the 27. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee with legendary off-road capability. By Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Dell Computer. Pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct. Dell. What a great setup here. We have an Aggie defense playing the way Aggie defense of, of old played. Only one first down they've given up to Texas in the second half. You have Major Applewhite on the cusp of becoming the all-time single season passing leader in the Big 12 Conference and needing to take his team down to score and win. Well, I've got all the faith in the world in Major Applewhite when he's healthy. Here's the three-step drop, waits, looks, and throws. That ball is going to be overthrown. And keep in mind, Major Applewhite is definitely not healthy. Suffered with a stomach virus last night and this morning. He did not start the ball game. The freshman Chris Sims went most of the way. Major Applewhite was having a tough time keeping anything down throughout the first half. Made a messy sideline. But they said he could play in an emergency, and yeah. this certainly is one. And this guy, number eight, I wonder if that hard hit he suffered out of bounds had anything to do with him coming out or if they battled it otherwise, and that it was the time to bring in Major Applewhite. Keep in mind, Chris Sims was 10 of 21 for 130 yards. Here's second down and 10. Applewhite. Underneath, almost picked off. Wow, Michael Jamison broke in the ball and almost had the interception. Mike Hankwitz, the coordinator at AM, yeah. made great adjustments at halftime. His team is playing unbelievably with emotion, but they're in the right places. That's great defense, and with basically Kwame Cavill is double covered. They knew that Kwame Cavill had too big a first half, so they doubled him. They've had to man up on the other guys, and they've done a great job there. Third and ten. With time. Flags fly. And he's got a completion. It's caught by Brandon Healy. It'll be a first down if the flag is not against Texas. That'll probably be a hold against Texas is my bet and negate a fabulous play by Major Applewhite. Holy cow! There is the hole. Well, they didn't waste time throwing the flag, partner. It came in immediately. Mike Williams, big number 63, all 340 pounds of him, guilty of that hold, and that's one of the bigger penalties that the Longhorns have suffered in a long time. That'll just make this crowd louder. So I wouldn't be surprised if Hankwitz decides here the coordinator just to rush with your four. Don't bring a bunch of pressure because that exposes you in the secondary. Third and 20. They only bring three at him. Plenty of time. Throws across the middle. It's complete. Short of the first down to Cavill. Exactly what I thought they would do in a terrific job of execution for the Aggies. They gave up just enough and not too much. Brandon Jennings is playing center field, not in your picture. Middle receiver, crossing route, open against the zone. Brandon Jennings has to make the tackle, and he does it. So Steady player, and he came through once again. Cavill with his ninth catch of the day. Spectacular afternoon. But he doesn't have enough for the first, and so Ryan Long will punt it deep. This one hits at the 40 and gets a Texas roll inside the 30. Down to the 26-yard line. 30 
69-yard punt. And with three minutes and 35 seconds left, Texas A&M will have the ball. Well, A&M would like to do nothing more than turn around and hand it to the big guys back there and burn some clock and make some first downs. Time permitting, we'll get you to the 50 post-game report with John and Terry. Right now, 335 left in this ballgame. 2016 A&M. Toons across the 30. They'll try to bang it, bang it out and melt the clock. The improvement for Texas A&M has been across the board here in the second half. As is often the case, the offensive line has been left out of some of the complimenting, but they've done a terrific job. For them to mash out five yards when Texas knows that they're planning to run it right down their throat is impressive. Second down, tunes again. To the 31 yard line. It'll bring up third down and long. Texas sitting on its timeouts right now and they're running a combination of blitzes or they have all afternoon and they've run some, some run blitzes that really haven't been as effective as you would have thought here in the second half. But I'll say this, Mac Brown is as good as he gets oh, absolutely. about knowing and understanding the clock and your timeouts. Well, I thought you were going to stop there after the first part of that sentence. He's as good as it gets. He, he, he is, is that good and he is with clock management as well. Down and five for the Aggies. And again, it's Toons. Toons will be short of the first by about a yard and a half. They take the conservative route. I don't know but what I would have done the same thing, but that is the conservative route. You're probably not going to pick up a third and five on the ground. Your percentages are not very good, but what you do is you either force Texas to use a timeout or you run the clock. Whereas if you throw it, they've thrown to a low percentage of completions, and if you throw it incomplete, the clock stops. Well, pretty much dictated by McCown, who's just eight of the exactly. two. No, right? We'll be back to the conclusion after this. Eleven blue-clad warriors stand on the brink of battle and ask themselves, where is the other team? Ruben! On a Sunday afternoon, Nothing helps you kick back at the end of the day like Tostitos chips and salsa. I can't imagine it. We do suggest you actually wait till the end of the day. He's a fine dancer, too. Dig in, kick back with new Hint of Lime Tostitos. Kumbaya! Chili's technical support. Um, how do you eat these new Chili's lettuce wrap appetizers? Just pick up the lettuce, add grilled Asian spiced chicken and sauce, fold and eat. That sounds great. Doesn't it, though? Bud Light, please. There you go. Thanks. Hey, aren't you, uh... Yeah, yeah, I am. Hey, everybody! It's Faith Hill's husband. She is so amazing. I would love to meet her. Man, she's... Yeah, you and her, huh? <laughs> How's that working out? Bud Light is proud to sponsor Faith Hill's husband. Well, you know, I sing a little, too. Oh, bless your heart. Two minutes of the game, Leckler's punt is his best of the day. Boy, he booms this one. It'll stop at the 11-yard line, and once again, Texas will be backed up. A 54-yard punt by Sheriff and John Saunders. Well, Tim, we want to remind everyone that coming up next is Nebraska and Colorado. Frank Solich has his eyes on the national championship game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Gary Barnett would like to stop him from getting there. And it's been close the last three times these two teams have met. It is coming up at the bottom of the hour. Right now, Tim, back to you. All right, John, thanks so much. And Gary Barnett has done a marvelous job with that ball club. But Nebraska, so strong. That's coming up next. Right here, we have 152 left in the ball game. Texas A&M 20, Texas 16, and the Longhorns are backed up. Look the flowers 
Applewhite looks deep, throws deep, in the coverage incomplete. And he throws to Flowers. They like to do that in their four wide set. They'll have Flowers on the near side or on the side by himself, and they feel that they can get a lot of single coverage, and he is the speed merchant. I mean, he can really fly. But A&M right now playing with a Man safety. Free. And safety and bring the safety over right. to help the corner on that deep coverage. That's right. And, and Major Applewhite is going to have to be patient at times and look off that safety. But you're exactly right. They basically have one and a half men instead of man coverage on them. Worst thing A&M can do now is give up a big play. Keep everything in front of them. And the secondary is playing soft. Second down and ten. Applewhite. Throws underneath, has the completion to the 22-yard line. Hodges Mitchell very wisely runs out of bounds. He's got the first. We thought coming in this would be a rivalry game like this, that it would come down to the end, and that Texas would, because of the superior punting of Leckler, be forced to make drives of 70 and 80 yards. And here on this ultimate drive, because of Leckler, they're having to make one of some 90 yards. A record just set by Major Applewhite today, the Big 12 single season record. That was Kurt Detmer, of course, in Colorado. More important things for Applewhite right now, he wants to move the football, and that's thrown incomplete to Flowers. Flowers has had an off day, that was great coverage there, but Flowers has not played well, and Major Applewhite, you can tell, is not 100%. But you're right, Texas A&M defensively now has to go contrary to what their nature is in terms of wanting to blitz. They've got to play smart, prevent big plays, keep them in front of them. Aggies playing on emotion. Dedicated this game to the victims that were killed and injured in the bonfire accident. Apple right on the draw. Mitchell's got a hole. He's got room out across the 30. And is hit hard at the 37, but it's another Texas first down. Terrific play call. Terrific play call. No one expecting anything on the ground. And watch it open up for Hodges Mitchell. And he knows what to do with it. When this guy sees a crack, he goes. He could be the best run-catch combo the team has ever had. And he's Texas only has ever had. You know, he has not fumbled now for some 240 consecutive plays. He's over 100 yards rushing today. First down, Texas. Blitz is coming. And there's your experience of Major Applewhite who throws it away. Very good point. Very good point. Last thing you want if you're Texas is a sack. Everybody mixing it up. A&M comes with the pressure. There's a bust of assignment in the protection. And so they win that battle. The battle before was won by the offensive coordinator with the, the run call. It's a little chess game with a lot on the line. Second down. And 10. Another catch by Cavill to the 40. It's a gain of five. And Cavill has 10 catches today and 95 for the year. Well, that's a play that's plus for A&M because the clock continues to run as Major Applewhite looking at the defense. Right now what he's doing is calling the protection to the offensive line based on what he sees defensively. 43 seconds left in the game. Applewhite throws a strike to the 46. Brandon Healy with the catch, and the clock will stop with 37 seconds left. Greg Davis, the coordinator, gives Applewhite a lot of leeway here. He'll give him a package of six plays, three runs, three passes, and Major calls what he wants based on what he sees. Texas has to get a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. They trail by four. 30 seconds left. Applewhite is sacked. Ball's loose. Brooks forced the fumble. And they're still wrestling at the bottom of the pile. A&M thinks they have it. This is the game. It is over. Aggies have got it.
Brooks, 21, comes on a corner blitz right there. No one picks him up. He slaps the ball. Major Applewhite tries to get on it, but this day is meant for the Aggies. The stadium has the buzz to it that you rarely experience. Amazing feeling in this stadium right now. As I look around the stands in front of us, there are tears, there are jubilation. Unbelievable. And on the other side. Three seconds left. This game, a culmination of two of the toughest, well, eight days anyway. Not two weeks, but eight days, which has been a kaleidoscope of emotions, not only for those here in College Station, but throughout the state of Texas, throughout the country. The Aggies dedicated this game to the 12 victims, the 27 injured, and they will come away with a win over their rival, the Texas Longhorns. I think that every player Every coach and every fan now realizes more than ever before that there are more important things than football games. But this afternoon, a football game was important for the right reasons. Texas takes a timeout, but there is a buzz in this stadium. This game today has been like a healing salve or a bomb because it's forcing the players and the fans to move on. And you're right, the game certainly does pale in comparison with the tragic events of the hour, but it's, it's actually forced them to grow up and move on and take care of business, and they did that today. And for at least these 60 minutes, their minds were off those tragic events. And Tim, don't you agree we had a shot there of Mac Brown, but, but here's a guy on the other side of the, the field, the, 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 the hated villain in the eyes of Texans in terms of football here at a &M, but he has handled it as gracefully and appropriately as anyone could ever handle a situation like this. Oh, the entire University of Texas and the University of Texas family has. Mac Brown has won 38 of his last 46 games, nine straight winning seasons, seven straight bowl bids. He gets it done, and he gets it done with class. But you're right, this day belongs to the Aggies. 14 seconds left. We'll be back for the conclusion right after this. Afraid your next get-together will be a flop? Order Chili's Party Platters. Act now. Call a Chili's representative and your guests will flip over party-sized servings of buffalo wings, fajitas, baby back ribs, and more. And pre-party stress now. Order Chili's Party Platters new from Chili's. Tim, I don't know if R.C. Slocum said much at halftime or if it needed to be said, but whatever happened at halftime was one of the more memorable things that those kids would have ever gone through because the performance of Texas A.S. in the second half has been nothing short of phenomenal, particularly on defense. They've given their team a chance to win, and a team has won that didn't look like it was capable of scoring and winning. This is a remarkable comeback by Texas A&M. Well, when you think of all the hardships that this university has had over this past year, it's incredible. I mean, you had John Harvey, R.C. Slocum's son, who had open-heart surgery in Houston. You had the plane crash that was carrying the skydiving team from Texas A&M. Diagnose, or di the uh, Ray Gore, the A&M quarterback coach, was diagnosed with Luke Gehrig's disease. Then the 12th dead. I mean, it's just been an incredible year, an incredible upset here by Texas A&M today over the University of Texas. They've never had a sweeter victory than this. Ever. Texas A&M 20, the Longhorns of Texas 16. Downstairs to Chip Tarkington. Congratulations, can you, can you put it into words this win? Well, it's been an emotional week here for everybody associated with the A&M family. We've got strong people involved in this universe and our Aggie family, and they all pulled together today, and we pulled this thing off. It's a great credit to the spirit of Aggie Land. What in the world did you say at halftime? I felt like halftime that we should have been we should have been ahead of the ball game at halftime. I was really disappointed. I challenged the team that we weren't going to accept losing this ball game. We were coming out in the second half, going to do what we had to do to win it. Congratulations, great win. Back upstairs. 
Well, that motion with R.C. Slocum. You saw Randy McCown with the tears in his eyes. A game. It's Wisconsin where the fans stay for fifth quarter. I think they may institute that here in College Station today. These fans don't want to leave. Well, the Chevrolet players of this game have to be Hodges Mitchell and Jamar Toombs of Texas A&M. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet also will donate $1,000 to the two high schools. Mitchell, 24 carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. Toombs, 37 carries, 126 yards, and two touchdowns. Once again, the final score, Texas A&M 20 and Texas 16. Now stay tuned for the thrifty post game with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. Good afternoon, I'm Bill Butte.